And you'll be giving because it's your nature. You'll be giving because it's who you are. You won't be giving because you're trying to gain approval, because you're trying to qualify yourself. Don't go back to religion before Christ came, who slaves you want to become by trying to gain God's approval by observing any law, any law. Whatever law it is you think you have to observe, if that's what you think you have to do to gain God's approval, then you've went back to the slavery of the law. But if you want to live in the freedom of, of a child, of a daughter, then this is how you do. It's just, Father, you love me. Daddy, Father, you will provide for me because you love me. I don't have to try to figure it out. I don't have to worry and analyze and, and go, well, because I don't have this skill or I don't have this degree or I don't have this, you know, intelligence or I don't, then it just ain't going to work out for me. You know what I'm saying? How we do? We analyze it. You know, God gives a promise and we analyze it. Well, how can that ever work? That can't work for me because of this, 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 and this. Yeah. Instead of, as a child, just saying, Daddy, you're going to take care of me. You love me. You lead me. You guide me. You give me wisdom. Everything I have, everything that I am, you've given to me. I qualify. You love me. You're going to take care of me. See, that's intimacy. That's relationship. That's forsaking religion, having to do something to gain God's approval. For the relationship, the freedom of just knowing you're approved because of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Paul was pained until Christ be formed in you. See, if those thousands of people that day that I was in that meeting were grounded and established in who they were in Jesus, that would have not even have phased them. They would have known like this, I'm qualified because of Jesus. And that is what the Father wants for you. He wants every time you hear anything that points you to something other than Jesus, for you to look to him and say, Daddy, you love me, and I'm qualified because you sent Jesus to qualify me. Thank you for showing me that. That's what freedom is called. That's what freedom looks like. That's what true freedom looks like. You are never more going to be deceived into believing that you have to do anything to be qualified. Is that true? Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. All right, I'm going to finish this chapter up here. Verse 21, Galatians chapter 4. Abraham's two children represent two covenants. Verse 21, tell me, you who want to live under the law... <laughs> Do you know what the law actually says? The scriptures say that Abraham had two sons, one from his slave wife and one from his freeborn wife. The son of the slave wife was born in a human attempt yes. to bring about the fulfillment yes. of God's promise. But the son of the freeborn wife was born as God's own fulfillment of his promise, with no help from man. These two women serve as an illustration of God's two covenants. The first woman, Hagar, represents Mount Sinai, where people receive the law that enslaved them. Now, what did the law do? That's what the law does. It enslaves you. What does it enslave you to? Fear condemnation, shame, what? Guilt, doubt, resentment. I mean, it just enslaves you, enslaves you. <laughs> okay. Verse 25. And now Jerusalem is just like Mount Sinai in Arabia because 
she and her children live in slavery to the law. But the other woman, Sarah, represents the heavenly Jerusalem. She is the free woman, and she is our mother. Yes, as Isaiah said, rejoice, O childless woman, you who have never given birth. Break into a joyful shout, you who have never been in labor. For the desolate woman now has more children than the woman who lives with her husband. And you, dear brothers and sisters, are children of the promise, just like Isaac. But you are now being persecuted by those who want you to keep the... Who's going to persecute you? Who is going to persecute you? Those who want you to keep the law. Circle that really big because you're going to find where the persecution is going to come from. Is those who want you to keep the law. Just as Ishmael, the child born by human effort, persecuted Isaac, the child born by the power of the Spirit. I cannot tell you how many people. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I, it's amazing. Thank you, Jesus. It's amazing to live in the freedom of knowing who you are in Christ. It's amazing to live in the freedom of, of not worrying or caring what other people think of you because you have the approval and acceptance of the Father. It's amazing to live in the freedom that you know that you don't have to do anything more to qualify. You're already qualified. But see, the people who think they do have to qualify, the people that think they do have to put forth their human effort, will not like the one who says, I'm already righteous in Jesus. I'm already blessed in Jesus. I'm already favored in Jesus. I'm already qualified in Jesus. They will not like that. Because if you're not under the law, then you're out from under their control. And that is the truth. The law is all about controlling people. It's all about controlling people's behavior. That's what religion does. It tries to control people by rules and regulations and getting them to do what they want them to do. And if you give people freedom, then they won't do what you want them to do. They won't work in the nursery. They won't pay their tithes. They won't give. But you know what? That really, you know what? The truth is, The truth is, if you give people freedom, do you know the Bible? I'm going to tell you a story in the Bible that is a story of grace. They were building the temple, and the people came, and they gave so much that they had to say, take it back, you're giving so much, we don't have room to put all this stuff. And I am telling you this, when the people of God are truly free, to be led by the Spirit and give out of their heart. There is going to be so much provision, so much abundance, that they're not going to know what to do with it to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let the people go. Let them be free. Let them give out of their heart. Let them give out of their identity. Let them give because they love, not because they're trying to be loved. Let the people go. Let them be free to live in their new identity in Christ. Let them know they're qualified already. They're loved. They're approved. And then watch as God's glory shows up in the people and in their giving. And there will be no lack among God's people. I'm telling you, there's coming a day. There's coming a day. You know what? It's just a trickling. We've seen it start happening. The Spirit of God is rising up, teaching the true gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible says righteousness is going to rise among all nations. 
through the self-fulfilling power of God's word. And the glory of the church is going to rise. And she's going to be without sickness, without lack, without fear. She's going to walk in confidence and security because she knows she is loved by the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We're going to walk in victory, church, because we're the bride of Christ. We're the bride of the King of kings. We're the child of the King of kings. We are not to live subservient slavery lives. That's not our destiny. Our destiny is to live in the kingdom of God, where the glory of God manifests everywhere we go. His abundance, his provision, his healing, his security, his peace, his joy. That's our inheritance. And the Bible says that the, the slave son will not share the inheritance of the free son. I want to read it. It's the last verse of chapter 4. Listen to this. Woo! Verse 30, but what do the scriptures say about that? Get rid of the slave and her son. For the son of the slave woman will not share the inheritance with the free woman's son. So, dear brothers and sisters, we are not children of the slave woman. We are children of the free woman. We are children of the free woman. See, he's, he's begging, he's pleading with him not to live like slaves. He's pleading with them not to try to earn by their human effort and their good works. He's pleading with them to live as an heir, to live as your loved, to live as though you have everything you need in Jesus. To live as a free, free child of God. Because the slave will not share in the inheritance of the free. You can be in freedom because Jesus purchased your freedom and living like a slave and not experiencing the inheritance that belongs to you. I know it is true because I lived there. I was living like a slave when I was a child of the free by trying to earn God's favor, by comparing myself to everyone else. I'm going to tell you one. It is is, is clear to me. How do you know you're living like a slave when you think somebody else is more favored than you? That's how you know you're living like a slave. When you're, when you're a child of the king, you're, you're a son of the free woman, you're just as favored as Jesus. God hears your prayers just as though Jesus was praying. You don't need to compare yourself to another believer, another sister, another brother. Compare yourself to Jesus. He lives inside of you. You're equal with him. You have his righteousness. Je- the Father hears your prayers. And answers them just as though you were Jesus himself. Do you believe it? Because that's all that you have to do. Is believe that you're loved that much. The scripture says you are loved as much as Jesus. You are as righteous as Jesus. You have the spirit of Jesus in you. The secret and mystery of the gospel is Christ lives in you. The hope of experiencing his glory. Religion takes Jesus out of us and makes us think that we have to somehow measure up to him. Separates us from Jesus. That's what religion does. Separates us from the Father, separates us from Jesus, makes us feel subservient, slaves. That's what religion does. But Jesus set us free. How did he do that? He made us equal with himself. He gave us his perfect righteousness as a gift. We are as favored as Jesus We are as qualified as Jesus. We have God's power working in our lives just as though Jesus did when he walked upon the earth. 
Jesus came to show us the kind of life we can live in the, with the Father. He walked upon this earth, and he showed us the kind of life. He said, come to me, and I will show you how to take a real rest. And that rest is knowing that you're loved by the Father, you're approved by the Father, you're qualified by the Father, not based on anything that you've done, right or wrong, but based on the sacrifice that Jesus made to give everything to you, to make you an heir of everything. So whatever it is you're facing, whatever it is your circumstances scream at you, just remember what the Father says. What does the Father say? Jesus faced difficult circumstances, did he not? Did he not? He faced persecution. He faced storms. He faced people wanting to kill him. I mean, he had, he had some major trials when he walked upon this earth. But he reigned as a king. Because you know why? He knew who he was. He knew what his father said. And he believed him. He believed that he was loved and that whatever the Father promised, he would do. Whatever the, promise, whatever the Father said, he was able. Right? So there are all, all of us. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. What is your inheritance? Deliverance. What is your inheritance? Restoration. What is your inheritance? Provision. What is your inheritance? Health and healing. Peace. Joy. Love. Victory. And the son of the slave woman will not share the inheritance with the free. Son of the free. Do you understand what I'm saying? I hope that you do. Because I'm giving you all I got. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The inheritance. Do you want to just have it in the bank somewhere? Or do you want to actually experience it? Okay. Do we know that the only thing that we have to do to experience that is to rely upon Jesus. Amen. In every situation, no matter what it is, have to do with your children, finances, healing, relationships, whatever it is, just turn to Jesus. Remember what he did for you. Remember what he says about you. Remember who you are in him. Remember who the Father is. Just live and breathe and walk in Jesus, in his strength. And when it, get, when it seems hard, then Jesus, help me. You said you would be my strength. You said you would be my redeemer. You said you are my, my help in time of trouble. I'm going to end with this, and, uh, this story about my puppy dog. I don't know why this is coming up. It's going to help somebody. But about a month ago, I was sitting in the chair with my little puppy dog, Hershey. And he was sitting right there, and I had gotten up really fast to do something, and I flipped him while he flipped when I got up. Well, when he came back, when he found himself, he, was, he started to yelp. And he was yelping, and I was like, oh, my goodness, I hurt you, Hershey. What did I do to you? Well, I look at him, and one of his paws is, I mean, here is, Paul's are supposed to be like this. His paw was like that. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what did I do to you? And so I'm just like, oh my goodness. And, and, and this is the sad part. My first thought was, I got to get you to the vet. I got to get you to the vet. You're hurt. You're, you know, your leg's broken or something. Well, I'm in my pajamas. My, my, um, my daughter has a, a friend spending the night. 
my dog is yelp my dog is whining yelping in pain okay and i'm thinking what am i going to do oh my goodness i've hurt you so i call my daughter i said you got where are you you got to take you got to take hershey to the vet he's hurt i don't know what's wrong with him she says mom i'm babysitting i can't take hershey to the vet so i hang up the phone and i'm thinking jesus <laughs> I found myself in a hopeless situation. I didn't have my daughter to take Hershey to the vet. I had my pajamas on. My dog was whining. I, my mind was, I, I have to have a miracle here. I, I, I don't have time for anything but a miracle here. I put my little Hershey on the ground, and I put my hands on his belly, and I started to cry out to Jesus. And I said, Jesus, you said that it, the righteous cry out and you hear them and you hear them and you deliver them from all their troubles. And I'm in trouble right now, Jesus. My puppy, I mean, he is he's whining. I mean, this is what was devastating. This was I mean, I've had my dogs had two hip surgeries, okay? I've taken him to the vet twice, okay. Somebody asked, you know, I said one time, this dog is supposed to be blessed. Why have I, has he had two hip surgeries? And somebody said to me, he's blessed because you are his owner. He'd be a dead dog if it, you weren't. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, Hershey, you're blessed. <laughs> but now this is the third leg that's messing up, and I'm, and I'm on the floor crying. I'm not taking him to that because the other two times he wasn't in pain. I don't know how to explain that, but he was in pain, and I needed a miracle, and I didn't have time for anything but Jesus to come through for me right now. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I had no other hope. Not the vet, not my, my, not my daughter, not my husband. How come it takes three, four to get to Jesus? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, I have my little hands on him, and I'm just praying, Lord Jesus, help me. You love me. You love me. You're there. You said you never fail me, you never forsake me, and I need you right now. You said if I cried out, you'd hear me, you'd deliver me from all my troubles, and I need you now, Jesus. I need you to show up right now. And I am telling you, that puppy dog, he stopped whining. I looked down at him. And I'm just like, oh, my goodness. And I took my hands off that puppy dog. He jumps up off the, <laughs> off the floor, starts running around, running around. And I'm just looking at him going, oh, my goodness. Jesus, you showed up. <laughs> and I was just like all day long, I was like, a miracle. I am telling you, a miracle happened. And I went back and I talked to the Lord about that later. I was just like, Father, I mean, you work in many ways. And he meets us where we're at. You know what I'm saying? He meets, he loves us. And wherever we're at, he's going to meet us. And health and healing is the goal, however that comes. Whether it comes with a miracle or whether it comes through a process. That's the goal, right? That's the promise, is health and healing. And so I was asking the Lord, Lord, you could have did a miracle with his two hips. What happened here, you know? And the Lord just showed me so clearly. He said, Connie, your only hope was me. Your only hope was me. I'm like, that was right, Jesus. You were, in that moment, my mind was, I got no other out but Jesus. And I remember it took me way back when I first started this journey, and I thought I have no other hope but Jesus. And when I had no other hope but Jesus for my marriage, I saw my marriage turn around. When I had no other hope but Jesus for my finances, I saw my finances turn around. When I had no other hope for my, my poor self-image and my insecurity and my fear, when my only hope became Jesus, I became confident and secure in him. When your only hope is Jesus, you're living like a free woman. Isn't that good? Because your hope is in Jesus, and you're going to see his glory manifest in your life. 
Amen. Father God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you. You are so good. You are so good to us. You love us so much. And all that you want from us is for us to believe and trust and rely upon Jesus. And you even give us the grace to do that. Oh, Jesus, we thank you for making it so easy for us. We thank you for delivering us from the bondage of religion and making us free as children of God, heirs of the promise, heirs of your glory. Thank you for your empowerment to walk and live and breathe as free children of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Awake to righteousness. You are qualified, innocent, forgiven, accepted, approved, and loved. Join Connie Witter as the journey through the Book of Romans continues in Awake to Righteousness, Volume 2, and be empowered by grace to live a righteous life. Available now. Awake to Righteousness, Volumes 1 and 2. Also available as a group Bible study package. Call 918-994-6500 or visit ConnieWitter.com to order or download your copy today. Because of Jesus Ministries introduces our first children's storybook, Are You a Chicken Head? by Connie Witter. This fun little book asks the big life question, What's true about you? Mommy, that girl called me a chicken head. Is that true, Victoria? Are you a chicken head? What does Jesus say about you? For many years, I have shared this true story to encourage others to believe what Jesus says about them. I pray this book will inspire parents, grandparents, and children alike to confidently respond. I believe what Jesus says about me. Order this delightful book today. Call 918-994-6500 or go online at becauseofjesus.com where Bible studies are always in the light of Jesus. Because of Jesus Ministries is your resource for grace-filled, Jesus-focused Bible studies and curriculum for all ages. Adult Bible studies, books, devotionals for girls and teens, DVDs, CDs, and MP3s. We offer group Bible study packages as well. Connect with us and check out our many free resources online at ConnieWitter.com, where Bible studies are always in the light of Jesus.